Hello folks and welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to compare the Pico 4 to the HP Reverb G2 in the only way I know how and that is to go for a flight and have a chat. So we're going to take off from a very gloomy and frosty Manchester, have a play in the Derbyshire Hills and hopefully by the end of this video you'll have a clear indication of whether you should upgrade or keep your Reverb G2 because I've been asked this question so many times recently I think it's important now that I've had the headset for a good week or so and quite honestly been using it non-stop um, I've got a good idea, I've got a handle on what I think is good about the Pico and what isn't so good and how it compares to the G2 so if you're interested stick around, stay tuned for this video I just want to say a massive shout out to today's sponsor which is FS Academy they do provide the best tutorials you can find for this sim and right now they've got a 40% discount code well I say right now it starts on the 21st of December so remember that make sure you put it in your diary or something because that is a massive discount and they do provide as I say the best tutorials whether you're a GA pilot all the way up to an airline captain they've got you covered all of their training packages are bespoke and by real world pilots and instructors and they come with charts and procedural information and honestly even if you just try one of them for 40% discount it's quite an amazing deal so thank you to FS Academy for supporting the channel go check them out links will be in the description below right let's light the afterburners up and by the way I am using my um, haptic chair by Sim uh, Studio, Sim Racing Studio rather. <laughs> so many like names and things to remember. And it feels amazing in this aircraft. I can feel the engine vibration and everything. Oh, and the gear coming up as well, the thud. Superb. Right then, look at it. It's a bit of a gloomy lot today. Um, <laughs> but I just love the fact that this Sim accurately depicts the weather. I mean, look at all these you know, areas of frost. Superb. So I can even feel the afterburner kicking in there as well. Right, let's get straight into this video. I'm going to talk about the things I love better about the Pico 4 and the things that I think the Reva D2 does better. And at the end of it, I'm going to recommend to you, depending on your system, whether you should upgrade or not. And then my own personal opinion on whether I prefer this, the G2. And hopefully I'm going to do all that in about five, six minutes. Here we go then. <laughs> so first of all, what is better about the PK4 than the Reverb? Well, there's two, probably three main factors here for me. The first one, this is the shocker, okay? Is that the visuals, even though the G2 is a native PC VR headset, if you've got a very fast GPU, and you can use god mode I personally prefer this to the G2 that is the first time I've ever said that let alone a headset that's not even a native PC VR headset that is mind-blowing to me and there's two main factors for that one virtual desktop is an absolute game changer dare I say it for VR with this headset it is absolutely fantastic I'm getting a you know a butter smooth 45 reprojected frames per second and it's locked and sometimes it jumps up to 60 frames per second whilst recording it feels so smooth and the performance is better than if I use the Reaver G2 even on my system because the Windows Mixed Reality platform whilst pretty decent especially as it's open XR as well virtual desktops better even with Steam VR in this sim can you believe that folks I cannot believe I'm even saying that but it definitely is better. This is so gloomy today, isn't it? Look at this. This is Lady Bower. I've got ultra settings on pretty much everything apart from LOD. Um, and yeah, it's running so well. Hopefully it's gonna show on the uh, mirror image. So yeah, first of all, the performance, if you've got a fast GPU, is better with the PK4 than it is with the Reva G2. The second big thing, this is probably the most obvious thing of all, the pancake lenses of the Pico means that I've got about 75% totally clear vision. I can move my eyes around instead of my head. So you'll probably notice that I'm not moving my head around so much. That's because I can see the entire console in front of me. It's thanks to those pancake lenses. They are absolutely beautiful and it makes a huge difference. 
really does. And here's the thing, even though I don't think the PK4, even in God mode, is quite as sharp as the G2, it doesn't matter because it's sharp enough over more of the image. And I would take that any day over just a tiny little sweet spot that's about 10-15% of your vision because it's just so blurry, folks. That's my personal opinion, but as I say, you might think differently. You might prefer that real pin sharp center, and for that the G2 still wins, but only by a smidge. And if you're able to upscale a little bit in Steam VR, then it's basically the same in terms of resolution and sharpness, but you get that huge, massive wide sweet spot, as well as the field of view. That's another thing, actually. The field of view in the PK4 is much better than it is in the G2, in my opinion as well. So let's just recap. The three main points are, if you've got a pretty decent fast GPU, okay, then the PK wins on performance. In my opinion, it's better clarity over a wider field of view. And of course, the pancake lenses means you get a better sweet spot as well. What isn't so good? Well, this is where things get a bit tricky, and I think it's important for you to know this. If you've got anything other than, say, a 40 series graphics card, so let's say you haven't got a 40, 80, 40, 90, which is pretty much most of you, I'd imagine, then I would still recommend the G2, because the Pico 4 demands a lot of power. Because bear in mind, this is not a native PC VR headset. So if you've got a 30 series card, perhaps anything lower than a 3090, then I'd recommend you stick with your G2. Absolutely, because you're gonna get better performance, simply because the encoding that's needed to be done for the GPU, especially on godlike mode, which is the highest resolution in virtual desktop, it's just too much. Secondly, I'd still say the G2 has better audio. However, I must admit the Pico 4 audio is pretty damn good, actually. It's not bad at all. It's very impressive considering it's just firing out of this uh, sort of strap here. The bass frequency isn't nowhere near as good as the G2, but it does a fairly decent job. But if audio is important to you, then absolutely the G2 wins on that one as well. I think the other thing to mention that right now at the time's recording, the PK4 doesn't have many accessories, so um, the G2 is definitely more comfortable. However, I do think that the PK4, don't get me wrong, it's still a very comfortable headset. I mean, it's so well balanced and it feels so light and tiny. So even though the facial interface is a bit hard, in fact, mine's getting softer now, actually. As you can see, I don't really wear it very, very tight. It's like very loose on my head because I'm not like playing Beat Saber or anything. So I'm just sat in a cockpit. Look at that cloud layer there. Let's punch right through that as we talk about my final verdict. So if you've got a 30 series graphics card, then I would recommend the G2 over the Pico 4 simply because you're going to get better performance um, and also it's going to be very taxing for your GPU since the Pico 4 is not a native PC VR headset. However, if you've already got a 40 series graphics card, say a 4080, 4090, which I appreciate are very expensive, but more people are going to buy them over time. So this video, you know, it's going to still be applicable in, say, six months time. Um, then get a Pico 4 because you'll find with virtual desktop, it runs smoother than the G2 with OpenXR, which is mind-blowing. Can't believe that. You have a much wider sweet spot, like 75% of those lenses, because pancake lenses are absolutely beautifully clear. And you're going to get about 90-95% of the sharpness of the G2. Not only that, it's a very versatile headset, and it does standalone brilliantly. Like, for instance, Red Matter 2 in standalone on this headset, it's like it's a PC VR title. However, if you've got a 30 series graphics card and you can't run godlike mode, which is very taxing for your GPU, then stick with the Reva G2. It's still a fantastic headset. It's still really the best bang for your buck for most simmers, without a doubt. And it is slightly clearer than the Pico 4. But of course, you've got those blurry Fresnel-based lenses. And to be honest, in 2023, which we're getting very close to now, Fresnel lenses are just, oh, I just don't think they should be a thing anymore, quite honestly. The VR industry should be moving now to pancake lenses and spherical lenses. Look at that, right on the edge now of the uh, speed of sound. Oh, fantastic. 
And I'll just round out the video with my own personal preference for my own simming needs. I absolutely prefer the PK4 over the Riva D2 with my system, without a doubt. I just love it. I think it's a fantastic headset. It shows where the future is going. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I do really appreciate it. Please feel free to subscribe and I'll see you again very soon. Take care and bye for now. I'll tell you what, let's go and intercept that airliner over there. See the contrails. <laughs> Look at this. I can't wait for CJ Simulations to upgrade the engine sounds on this because I think it's going to be very special indeed.